Right, we're on. We're on. <laughs> well, so how are you? Alan, over to you to, to what, what, what are we call in this thing. I think um, we're going to call this two lads living in Ireland talking shite about Webflow. Trying to do it once a week, but maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to abbreviate that to the visual, the visual div. The visual div, exactly. Yeah. The visual div. So we're, so we're probably going to focus on Webflow stuff, aren't we? But we're um, we might we might go off on tangents to. <clears throat> well, my div, my div related stuff, stuff at the moment. Sorry. We might got we we got div stuff we can talk about, you know, like other div stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> the te the tech stack that I'm working on all is focused around like Webflow is the is what brings it all together. So, so yeah, this is going to be yeah, just two of us talking about what's going on in Webflow at the at the moment. And I suppose the most recent thing was the Webflow Conf that we were both at. And yeah, like it was pretty, pretty impressive and pretty fun. Yeah, no, yeah, but like, like quick background is like we've we've tended to what catch up every couple of weeks on a on a call, and we we without talking too much business, we we end up like we'll end up talking about clients that we want some advice on, or or but generally we'll just have a chin wag, and at the end of the thing we're going like, gee, we we talked about some cool shit here. And I learned from you, you gave me your opinion on stuff and we did it the other way and we thought, do you know what, why not? Why not do that so everyone can listen and we make it a little bit more, more formal? And I guess the Webflow Conf has allowed us to go, hey, do you know what, it's a pretty chunky subject matter that a lot of people are interested in um, and have been involved in. So let's start there. Let's just yeah, have a so chin work while you, we're... Um... What were your thoughts? There was two kind of sides of what... <laughs> of what was there there was um the community side which i went to most of those community talks and then there was the this was the executive the corporate side the webflow side where the big, they were the big product launches the big ticket yeah. items yeah i um no I, I i was surprised by spline being the i don't was it the headline it probably was the headline you know, well, they they kicked off with the headline. Like we localization came second, but we've heard about localization, so we kind of knew that was coming. But the spline thing, obviously, it's very pretty. It, they could they could do a cool, cool demo of it. Um, but that it was interesting to see that was a bit of a headline. Um, like whether I like does it impact me day to day? Probably not. I I've never thought about me doing. 3D designs or 3D interactions for clients, but now that it's available, maybe that's going to become more of a, a thing. Um, but I was telling you, wasn't I? Like, I've got a um, my brother-in-law is launching a yogurt brand, and his uh, his design studio came up with a real flat design of the bottle. I was like, man, like it doesn't look very good and then i thought okay spline came along that week i was like right so i'm i'm gonna go and create a 3d bottle and the fact that i can then i can send it to him in whatsapp and he, you know he's a traditional kind of like non-tech he's like so what so what you've made a nice little bottle you know that we can share among family groups you know <laughs> great <laughs> and then spline comes along and you go well wow, no no no, i'm gonna stick it on the website so when you launch to all of the irish customers they can see a spinning bottle on the website. Pretty cool, eh? So yeah, that I'm 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 I wasn't that excited about it, but now I'm actually I'm pretty glad that they've launched it because it gives me something to learn as well. You know, I'm not a 3D artist, so it just seems like it's lowering the the barrier to making super cool websites, which is which is awesome. Um like you could you could roll up some of the helicopter clients that you've got. You could put like spinning <laughs> yeah. helicopters in. Yeah, maybe. It's it's <laughs> I don't like I've never first of all I've never had a use case I've never had a a job where I've needed something like spline but that doesn't mean I won't and it's not because of any major there's no real reason that I haven't it's just that's not the way the creative direction of the projects that I've been on have gone um I could 
envisage using it maybe not um on like a, a like a marketing definitely not in a product if i was building out a product maybe on a marketing site but i actually uh i had this one experience of something like spline like a, a, a like an interactive on scroll uh website but it was delivered to the ceo of the company that i'm working for and she was blown away and the what it was was the company it was a marketing company was using that as their pitch so it was like the the user was like going through this journey with 2d and 3d animations and they were just like blown away so i can definitely see something like that being used like as more of like a lead generation thing or you know that wow factor as a way of like in impressing clients and getting clients on board but is that really going to be the thing that would be used to drive a conversion for example i don't i don't know um unless you're going to like it, it really kind of depends on the product like on what you're selling because sometimes animation like that is is almost it does the opposite to what you want it to do like it has a wow factor but maybe it doesn't actually get people to do what you want but um but yeah it's super cool and yeah. like with everything with webflow and animations it's like the the next step or it's like one of the next steps that should be taken so yeah it's a pretty cool feature yeah so um the next one then is localization I know, I know we, we chatted about localization being an interesting one because, you know, we, we work with, we work with, you know, clients who are relatively local. Like we, we work with the U S clients, Irish clients, European clients. Um, but often there's a one language, um, a long, a one language play. And like, maybe often that's because there is only one language, but I know you've worked with uh, like Canadian clients who hmm. almost by law, they have to have a, an English and a French version of, of everything. So, yeah, so it's interesting. Like I think the Europe, European appetite for it is, is, is good, but I know it's something that you've wanted before from a web site as well. Yeah. So like, um, localization for me is, is a really cool one because it, to me, this, this shows like ambition. It shows where the, the company is like, like where Webflow is set in its standards and, and who it's targeting. And not just like in an enterprise sense, but but like overall, like for example, one very simple thing like is like in Ireland, as an Irish citizen, I'm entitled to have everything delivered to me in in our native Irish language. Um, like our constitution is both in English and Irish. If like a police officer stops me, like we call our police on Garda, and if they stop me, I'm entitled to be like spoken to in irish so there's like an immediate use case is that right yeah is that yeah. right if, if they stop gee yeah next time next time they speak to me i'm gonna say huh can i have... thing is i wouldn't understand what they were saying then, so yeah you, you you'd want to be pretty confident now with your irish to <laughs> get away with that because um like yeah all the guards are are they would have trained in irish and now they'd probably be the sim similar to the population. There'd be a certain percentage who would be fluent, and a certain percentage that are decent Irish, and a certain percentage that wouldn't know much. But yeah, you're entitled to. You're also entitled to have, uh, when you go to court, to have uh, to be spoken to in Irish. So, uh -huh. well, I suppose this okay. is going on to the, the point I'm making that if, like, if I was to do anything at a governmental level, even a local level, local government level, um, then something like localization would be incredibly important that the product that I'm building or the website that I was building would have to have two avenues for an individual to be communicated to. Um, and then like, so then this is kind of, that, that would be like a, you know, a constitutional or a legal requirement. Um, if you're in Europe, obviously like the internet, the language of the internet is American English, but like if you're French or you're Spanish, you definitely want to have a French or a Spanish website. Um, and possibly like if you've got an international market, market, you'd want to have an English version of that as well. But when I'm being spoken to by a website, 
I don't want to see American English. I want to see, ideally, I'd like to see Irish English, which is, you know, a version of UK English. But at minimum, I want to see yeah. UK. And, um, and when we're getting to like, if you're thinking about ambition, like when I'm like, this is a really ambitious thing. Like if you're building a product and if the idea of like a product is to make the user think like they're being spoken to, that they like when you take an action, that when the product responds to you, that it's it's actually talking to you directly. Like if I was able to get a, an app that said, Harry Allen, what's the crack? Instead of like, hello, Alan, what are you doing today? <laughs> you know, that that's that's really yeah. ambitious. And like if, if localization was able to have like English, Irish, UK, or sorry, Irish English, UK English, American English, even those three use cases, they're very different people we're talking to, even though we're trying to get them to do the same thing. Yeah, I think it's 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 huge. It's huge. Like I I, I divert to um the stuff that Edgar Allen are doing down in um down in Argentina and Brazil, you know, they're mm. they're like they I know that they're, they're based in the US, but they they a lot of their team are based down in Argentina. So and I know Mason there is has a big he's a big fan of um, the Spanish language same like you know Jack hmm. uh, from Webflail works works with them and and it's just seeing that the fact that you're going to see a lot more education and a lot more um, um, I guess usage of Webflow because it's it's taking it, it's allowing people to to do that you know they don't just they could develop in French and hmm. then use the translate to to turn it into English rather than just the other way around. It's just mm-hmm. like, it's super like copywriting and like, it's just, it is pretty cool. Like whether I use it very much, I don't know, but it's just, it's nice to have it, have it there. And I, I guess enterprise level, it's going to be, it's going to be pretty big, isn't it? So, um, and I then it's like the thing I that I would be using more than you realize. Do you think? Yeah, like it's one of those tools that I don't, I don't know. if you don't have it, you're not going to use it. But if you have it, you'll use it, kind of thing. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, if it's there, I suppose it's still, there's still a little bit of a barrier. You, you know, you've got to pay pay a little bit extra. But maybe that means it's just going to fall into the same thing as you know a business plan unlocks a certain amount of features. It's just going to be the same same kind of. I uh, actually features really there, I like. I really like that it's an add-on. That it's um, that you can. And I, I I really like that kind of approach that you can, if they do a bit more of that, where it's like an extra $9 a month or an extra $20 a month, you get this additional feature. I've, I've no problem with that. Um, it's actually one thing I'd, I'd love it's value. For yeah. And, and sometimes it's value, isn't it? it's like, you know? yeah, I think a lot of us, we, we, you know, Webflow hosting per se is, um, is seen as expensive compared to say other hosting options, mm. but with that you get you get so much. It's not just a, a server in a warehouse somewhere and that's it, job done. You, like it's the whole ecosystem you get access to. Because okay, yeah, you can have a site plan, but my clients just have some hosting and they have the full capabilities of Webflow. Like the fact that you can add on another, essentially another completely new site with completely different copy and assets and um alt tags and except like everything it's just for 20 20 dollars a month or whatever 25 dollars a month it's just a no-brainer it's yeah, just it's and it is brilliant like a lot of people are kind of go ah oh, but i have to pay for it well, well yeah you're getting a lot for your money if, if you ask me to go and translate that or employ someone to go and tra- translate something from English into uh, Spanish and republish it. it well, yeah, costs a lot more than twenty four dollars a month. <laughs> yeah, if you're thinking of like what you just said there, um, if you you're essentially getting another website, like the way to do it right now would be, you know, create a, a folder called fr, create a folder called en, create a folder called sp, and then underneath all of that, you have your individual pages and like there you're tripling the size of your website and then trying to make sure that those pages rank in the right country it's like you know you're you're on to a, a lot of complications whereas with this this yeah like i i think it's a no-brainer and yeah like i was saying you mentioned earlier on but i was saying like the 
about six or eight weeks ago, um, the CEO of the company I'm working for was like at a, a conference in Canada and came back saying, I need this in French. I was like, okay, <laughs> how do I figure this out? And then it was like about a week later, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Webflow read my mind. I was like, okay, localization coming in. I was just like, it's amazing. And it's making my life easier. CEO's buzzing about it. Um, you know, all the worry that was was there about meeting local requirements in Canada, gone. Like I was saying to you before, but um, like in Canada, it, like I don't, I don't know if you've actually have you ever flown to Canada. Like you can't get on an air, uh, on or off a Canadian airplane without being spoken to in French. It's like everything is done through French. All of the well, it's French and English, and it's even like they're trying to preserve the French part of Canada so much, or is that like if you're watching like a governmental debate, it's mad. Like you're you're watching these politicians, and then next you're listening to it and understanding what's going on and they're making a point about health or something and the next thing they're speaking Quebecois French and you're it just seamlessly move from you know I what I think about the healthcare system in Canada straight into French what's going on here and then they end yeah, it yeah, yeah. the other way around it's like they have this amount of time that they have to dedicate to both languages yeah yeah it's awesome like you know it's it's amazing that they do that so so yeah, it's it's not very far from where like Webflow is to, in order for this requirement to be incredibly important. And like you know, Shopify is based in Canada, so there's a connection there between Canada and yeah. and, and Webflow or Shopify and Webflow now, or Canada and Webflow. So yeah, yeah I think we can. Um, I think there's um, there's something that got released a couple of days ago which has that plays in the Shopify space. We can talk about that another time. Um, it's not part of the Webflow comp thing, but that's super interesting. Um, that, you know, like things like spline, localization, um, they have a big impact on how you, how you can play in the Shopify world, for example, or the e-commerce world. Like it's huge. You know, mm. currencies is a big thing. Mm. You know, just changing the currency or changing the asset that you, you're using because it has a different... Um, different piece of text on it it's just those little things that actually it's not just e-commerce it's you have to have localization you have to have integrations with product um builders like the splines of the world you know so yeah definitely if you zoom back out it's not just translate the header from this to this it's like okay well that opens up another world of other things that maybe next year are going to be announced as a as the, the big announcement um but on like my my biggest um, the one I was looking forward to, I say I was looking forward to it. I didn't know it was coming, but Figma <laughs> launched variables what earlier this year, and I thought, right, well, come on, like it's part of the the day to day life of a front end developer is using variables, CSS variables, and so I thought, okay, well, if Webflow launched this, this is going to be brilliant, and they launched it, and it's like, man, this is cool, you know, sitting there at whatever half 10 at night at my kitchen table, everyone else has gone to bed and we were watching the Webflow cop and we're going, yeah, you know, punch in the air. This is so cool. <laughs> and then I was, it was like, I could geek, you can geek out in your own kitchen when no one's looking, you know? So, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Are we going to cut this bit out? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we, yeah we might be. Yeah. Yeah. I was, yeah, variables came along and I just, yeah, gave it a quick nod. Um, no, no, but, was, but, no, this hey, is what actually happened. Okay. We'll re-record this. Yeah, when variables came out, I was totally calm in my kitchen. I wasn't like, oh, <laughs> but the way the reason I tee that up is because I I got my hands on it, and I got oh this is exciting right I'm gonna I'm gonna design something because I use mask a lot. I was gonna design something that works with mask and get my head around it and practice, mm. and then I got to the breakpoints and it doesn't work with breakpoints, and it does but it's a bit hacky and I. Like all my excitement just dropped. Like so, spline, yeah, I don't yeah. use very often. Come on there, like what you need to, what you mean by it doesn't work. So, well. so you know, okay, let, let's let's talk about a um a par paragraph class. Let's we got paragraph. Okay, so yeah. we're just going to talk about yeah. you know on desktop font size. It's, yeah, it's sixteen pixels, all right? 
So are you saying that with yes. Varios, you can't make it 14 pixels on mobile? So what, you know, the, the workflow without variables, the workflow we've, we're all used to with Webflow is, you know, on a desktop breakpoint, it's, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, let's, let's work in pixels, where the, 16 pixels, and then mobile, okay, 16 pixels. Um, sorry, a tablet, 16 pixels. Then mobile, we go, okay, I want it to be 14 pixels. Mm -hmm. So all you do is at that breakpoint, you go in and change the font size to 14 pixels. Happy day. Mm -hmm. So wherever you use that paragraph class now, it's going to be 14 pixels on mobile. Mm -hmm. With variables, I'm on desktop and I say, okay, do you know what? I want the paragraph to have the font size large. Okay, mm -hmm. so I want it to have font size large. And I set that variable to 16 pixels. Mm -hmm. Now I go onto the mobile and I want to go, well, at mobile breakpoint, I want that variable to, to be 14 pixels. So I want font large to be 14 pixels. Mm -hmm. So wherever I use it, whether I use it on a paragraph class or a, an eyebrow or the label on a card or wherever I use it, um, I want to know that on that breakpoint, it goes from 16 pixels to 14 pixels. You can't do that in Webflow at the moment with so, variables. You can't change the value of the variable using the the Webflow native system. You can do it with custom CSS like you used to be able to. Um, you can't do it with the native UI, which I found a little so, bit of a, a a kind of, I can't use it kind of moment, you know, which was disappointing. So just to make it um, clear, in so the variables live at the HTML level and classes yeah. live in the more in the body i suppose is how to think about it and what you would like is that the variable at the html level before it reads our body our section our headings and our paragraphs you would like to be able to set up a class or a variable for um, font size regular font size large that through the html changes from 16 on desktop down to 14 on 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 mobile but in order mobile, to make yeah. that happen now you essentially have to have two variables in the in in a class and that class i know yeah. well yes and you just have to have two variables that, that one i can use on desktop or i can assign to desktop and tablet say and one that i can assign to mobile um so they're not related to the class per se, but they're just avail they're available. And I have to just, when I get to the mobile, I just have to switch what variable I'm using, um, which kind so of defeats the whole object of yeah, the word it's variable. Not, it's not <laughs> but, a variation across classes. It's two different, um, two different styles, essentially. Yeah, it would essentially be like me um, having paragraph on desktop, the class of paragraph, and then on mo on tablet, it's also paragraph. And then on mobile, having to go is small uh, uh, as a combo class. Like we're mixing we're mixing things, but that's that's essentially what I have to do now because um, then then that class then will have that variable. But it, yeah, regardless, I know they're going to fix it and I know they're going to address it. But it does mean that I can't do any overhauls of current site builds hmm. using variables because i know that in the future i'm gonna to have to rip out all that those changes i did and redo them with the new capabilities um you know it's like i guess you know like timothy ricks with his lumos stuff he did all that hard work and it's all custom css and i'm, I'm suppose he's trying to look now as like how can he pull that into the native environment um and again someone like timothy ricks very clever guy but he's going to struggle to use just the native stuff with variables with that um, with that problem. Um, so yeah, it's it was just surprising, but still cool at the same time. And I'll probably use it for colors and stuff like that, but for font sizes, stuff that, that we know changes on different um, breakpoints. It's um, mm. yeah, so a bit yeah, of a limitation. It's, I suppose it's, so. a, it's a typical, um... The way Webflow kind of goes is they will release something that is more design focused initially. So more people are going to use the variables in in the color variables, particularly, which is pretty, pretty really exciting in like the 2.0 animation, like the way you're able to move um, gradients and colors now. So that's 
That's pretty awesome. So I suppose they're just to really make it like a, a, a correct variable, they're a little bit off. But they're... Um, yeah, but I, think it's, I think they're just... I don't know. Maybe if Webflow Comp was in November, they might have had time to... I, I just wish they had done what they do with a few of the others and gone, hey, guys, we're just going to wait and we're going to release it in November rather than release it. And then, you know, it's a dead end. Like, uh, you know, I've come all this way and I can't actually use it for the thing that I want to use it for, you know, because, yeah, you know, yeah. like custom CSS properties kind of comes hand in hand with that is they said it's, it's coming up, you know, and I hmm. say, that's great. We know that under the hood, there's going to be lots of things that need to change. And I know one of the Webflow team have been tweeting about how they've how they've done things under the hood. And it's brilliant to see that. But it, it, it's an acknowledgement that there's a lot of work to do to do to change these things. And I think the community at large would be more like, wait until you've done it properly, until you release it rather than release it because it can go in a blog post and a keynote and a thing. And um, mm. it's a bit, that's a bit harsh, but I think at the end of the day, like time is money. And when I tell the client, hey, we can do a new spline integration, like the client's like, whoa, or, you know, like localization, man, I can, and you know, you turn around to your client the day later and go, hey, you know that thing you asked me, I can do it now. Mm. Here's a proposal of how I'll do it, you know? And variables, it's not quite on the same level because on the front end, you don't see it as much. But it's still like I'm going to my client, hey, this new thing came out and it means that I can make the the thing work better for you with your design team, da, 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 da. And then a week later going, actually, sorry, I can't do that because I, you know, it's that kind of well, thing. So um, anyway, we're half an hour in. Half an hour into it. Um, the, when it's variables in like color, like the, the wow factor you're going to get, the immediate uh, kind of, what 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 people like you know yourself like you can build something two things they look awesome and one is built on sand and the other is like got a really solid foundation at the end of the day the the end user and the client a lot of times they don't care unless as long as it looks good so i, I suppose yeah. like with with the release of variables the low-hanging fruit is to make sure that colors work and then you know fonts is font sizes and all these other kind of padding sizes and they're like the next step you know it's to see variables You're, you can't see variables working unless it's it's easier to see how variables work using the colors and the animations than it is to use fonts because at the end of the day some people would be just like oh, i'm just going to use a class and that class will change across the break yes yeah. so I just yeah yeah no it, yeah it's probably it's just fundamentally different thing, but... Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, we're half an hour in now, and we we said we we're going to keep it to half an hour. So, Webflow apps and yeah, Webflow apps. That's just like we we know about Webflow apps. Everyone's talking about Webflow apps because it got released just ages on, ago. But what what just don't know. Carry on. Yeah. So just on like we're so the thing you were saying there, like variables, got you really excited. And then the, the dev inside you got a bit disappointed because you weren't able to use variables the way you'd like to. So the thing that got me most excited and like you asked me, to, you asked me if I had a fucking too many cups of coffee, like because I was getting so giddy about this announcement was the first thing I noticed was that the, the language of Webflow, the marketing language of Webflow completely changed. So I've been spouting for years that this is Webflow is a visual development tool. It's the reverse engineering of a VS code. Like when I used VS code, I'd write my code locally. I would have my, you know, I, I would deploy locally and I'd be looking, writing, looking, writing, looking, writing, looking, and I'd be seeing what I'm building all the time. And I know but that. What, that up, what is, what is VS code for Because like, that that is something that a lot of people who use Webflow won't have ever ever heard about or, or experienced. So I think we kind of broke up there, but so VS Code is like it's it's a product by I think it's Microsoft, and it's a traditional way of writing code, plain and simple. You can have your HTML in there, your CSS in there, your JavaScript folders, etc. So it's a traditional way of writing code, Visual Studio Code, free tool downloaded. You can 
And when I say deploy locally, you're not deploying to the internet. You're, you're deploying folders in your computer and then you're looking at it through a browser is, I suppose, the simplest way to, for me to explain it. So when I was using that tool, that's what I was doing. I was deploying locally, writing code in here and to, you know, in one place and deploying locally in C. And I was constantly watching what I was doing. Um, now, there are devs out there that can just write and write and write and write and write. And they can imagine it in their heads or they have so much experience that they don't need to deploy locally as much as I was. But when I found Webflow, I was like, this thing is the reverse engineering of, of what you're doing traditionally. I was visually creating things and then writing the HTML and CSS or the visual creation was writing the HTML and CSS. Yeah, yeah. So, so Webflow was doing what you were doing in VS Code and you were doing what the browser was doing. Yeah. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And yeah, so that I just was blown away by this. And so I've, when I, I've always seen it as a development tool and the whole marketing language has been about a design tool, which it does make it easier to replicate designs to a higher standard. Like there's, there's less, like if you get an awesome design, there's a less kind of like, this is going to be kind of tricky because I can visually figure it out. And it's like, it's way, I think it's just a way more um, practical way of figuring out complex designs is to be able to see it. Um, but the, the language of Webflow has always been about designers. Even the, the designer is called a designer, even though it's a de development environment. <laughs> you're not designing, you're creating. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> very true. Yeah, never thought about that. <laughs> yeah. So they're now the language of Webflow is something like bringing development superpowers to everybody, which is awesome. They're talking about its development. And the way these new kind of tools that are being brought in, like... Uh, there's a huge emphasis on components and I love using components and then components with slots. So previously they've been using slots for, for DevLink. And that's base, basically it's a place where you can put a component or code or something and it'll do something in that slot. So now they're trying to bring that kind of DevLink experience into Webflow. Now, I don't know when they're going to launch this, but if they're able to bring like React capabilities and power into dev into webflow and then the deployment of that product is all through webflow like it's a whole new world of cool <laughs> that we're going down and, <laughs> and it's just another 20 another 20 coffees that alan will have in the morning i yeah. like yeah 10 o'clock at night like the whole county here will be woken up by me screaming with delight <laughs> but what it does though is it like it brings this like whole new person and a whole new skill set into the Webflow world. Like if we're able to get those, you know, app development backend people into Webflow, then the visual developer is like that middle ground between incredible design and incredible backend products. And it just... But, but also I think on that point is there's an opportunity for um webflow devs let's call them mm -hmm. so not the design the designers but the developers in the webflow community to kind of like upskill in a in a safe environment you know where it's like okay now i need to learn a little bit about this and a little bit about that and a little, you know like we were talking at, in london there weren't we about you know and i what happens during an animation you know like an id appears here and what happens in the background like all those things are kind of nice to know when you're developing with Webflow, but you don't need to know. But the fact is now there's a, a little bit of a door opening to the developer world. You're just going to have all that osmosis of the developer language and ways of doing things and the way of thinking seeping into the Webflow community and, and vice versa, which is just like, it's just brilliant because you're kind of learning, you're learning visually as you're going along rather than going okay i need to learn how to code like okay let's jump into a vs code and code mm. so now you can do it halfway and obviously with the likes of slater and um and a few other of those tools it, there's there's that little middle as you say it's maybe it's not even a middle ground it's just this 
like conduit between the two worlds that is just getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And it's just, it opens up, you can say yes to more clients as well. It's like, yeah, yeah, we can do that. Cause mm. you know, it's, yeah, yeah. it but, is brilliant. But, and I'm like, I know you get excited cause you are definitely more of a dev, you know, I'm less, I am a dev, but I'm less of a dev than, you know, you get, you get turned on by divs and, and <laughs> attributes and IDs and stuff, you know? <laughs> That's kind of weird, but. <laughs> Um, well, look, I've always said that I'm, I'm not, I get, I get so much design envy when I look at the Webflow community. I'm just like, where did these people pull these ideas out of? Like it is sometimes it's mind blowing. And yeah. my favorite thing is like, my favorite thing is when I'm working with a group of people is to not be involved in the design process. Know what the, like if we're going from zero to hero kind of thing, not be involved be involved at the very, very start to say, well, like, this is where I come in. And then for the ideas to just be landed in front of me. And I go, like, we were talking about a business with no name a few weeks ago. And now we've got <laughs> this. I'm like, where did you guys get this from? It's like, it's amazing. And I, I, anyway, I digress. But what I love doing is bringing those ideas, like, completely to life and making sure that they're, like, perfect or as close to perfect as possible. And then more recently, what I've been doing is working with Make, Member Stack, and Slater. That's an, an Airtable. That's my tech stack. and building products based on that. And it's every month it becomes uh, more and more doable to do what the world wants in terms of a product. Um, so... The the there's there are tons there so we're keep, t- keep talking about development here. There are tons of tools out there. There's tons of products out there, no code products that will do incredibly powerful things. But the particular tech stack that I'm working with, Webflow, Slater, Member Stack, and uh, Make. Webflow and Slater, that code is written, and it can be if the product gets too big for what the tools can do. You can take them somewhere else and go traditional. Make make is basically a visual way of writing custom autom- automations in JavaScript. That can be replicated in a traditional sense. It can be someone can follow the the sequences and the scenario logic. Yeah. And logic and rewrite that code. And then member stack is obviously an overlay, uh, um, like a, a gateway. That also can, like, that's probably the ecosystem that would be hardest to come out of. But all of those products allow integration from other other tools. Um, and that's what's incredibly powerful is that there's a safe, there's a get out of free card if these tools, this t- tech stack doesn't do what we want it to do. But every every month, there's it's becoming more and more doable to do what we want. And that's why I'm, I'm mad excited about this new language of developer. And even the logo consisted of like the div and JavaScript yeah, and, yeah. Development. and the new logo was about where de- it's a development environment. And um, yeah, so I don't want Webflow to not be an amazing place for designers to work in. I just love the fact that they're recognizing uh, that they're a development environment too, even though they probably always knew it. And uh, they're just now marketing to developers and to be a place where you can develop ideas quicker, faster, quicker and faster, the same word, better. <laughs> more quickly and more faster. Yeah. More no. <laughs> but what would be even, what well, like when I think it was Vlad was saying about how to bring React into Webflow. Like at the moment, to use DevLink, you're taking your Webflow components, you're you're moving those Webflow components using React into VS Code, and that's where the magic is happening. The design is happening in Webflow, and updates of design is happening in Webflow, but all the magic in terms of React is happening outside of Webflow. But if we can bring that power into Webflow, we. If Webflow bring that power into the designer, then it's like, the next step is 
turning the products into like well you can, get this deploy it onto the app store like that's the next step it's get 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 this on another angle okay so i was listening to uh syntax podcast this morning and they had brad frost on there who who's huge in the design systems world mm. and his you know he has a knowledge of front end and a knowledge of design so his job essentially goes around helping helping companies work out a design system that can propagate across their shopify site their webflow site their wordpress site and their reacts app you know so that make sure the ui is consistent and stuff and as i was listening to this you know the, the guys were questioning um it's like Wes Boss and those guys who host it. They were questioning, well, how does it work? How does this work in reality? Like you have a whole Figma file of components and UI design and colors and fonts. And how do you then propagate that and make sure when it goes to the front end on a React stuff, it stays like that and it works. And straight away, I thought, do you know what? Well, soon you'll be able to pull in Figma designs into Webflow. And now you can design Webflow components that propagate into React. So now you've got your marketing site, which is based on do -do -do, Figma. You've got your React site, which is both do -do -do, all the way through to Figma. And then you've got your, um, you know, like the Shopify link, you know, Liqu Liquify Pro, I think it's mm. called. You know, you've, you start to, and before you know it, now you've got an ecosystem that is at both ends of the spectrum. So the like it's bringing designers and like react app devs and like as you said maybe in app stores and stuff like that it's bringing them it, it's a con like webflow itself is now the conduit because it's it's kind of talking languages on both sides of the the equation mm. so and because webflow is is for marketing sites webflow is for products you know like gated products with member stack and outsetter and but it's also now has an access point into more complex apps. Like imagine designers are going, hey, I'm just going to change the shadow on this button. And then they press a button and before you know it, boom, 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 all the way. That's not too far away now, which is mm. kind of scary that that can happen, but also pretty, pretty awesome that we can be in the middle of that. You know, we can be the, what they say, the kingmaker almost. <laughs> if we understand how that works, like we're the Webflow person or agency or expert in the room, we can make that efficiency happen. And then means that we'll have loads of friends on the design side and we'll have loads of friends on the, on the, on the dev side, you know, so it'd be pretty cool. But, but what's more important than all these big releases, because we've only got 20, we've only got 15 minutes left, um, is what happened in London last week. Like obviously London Webflow Comp is a Sam Fan tradition, say tradition. It's been going on for what four years, um, and then they went to Chicago, and then they went to New York, and then they came to London. And obviously London is in the UK, but it's it's within easy reach of lots of European destinations. So the the Webflow community from all over Europe, and and I know we actually had there were people flown in from India from um south uh, south africa like mm. the fact that all these people flew in and i remember landing in there and i think i met you for a coffee and a few of the other guys i've never met for coffees and and before you know it I, i'm just the vibe in that place was epic oh, there were no new announcements there were some really good talks about you know landing pages and seo and oh, man. agency Dude. setups and stuff but man like the people the people like i could I, I was i was buzzing for the next three or four days just on the on all the conversations and people i let because it, it didn't seem to be a negative a negative vibe or person right. in that room it was ridiculous it was just like yeah it was, it, yeah, it, was, it, was great, it was great fun as well yeah it was just like um we should have we should have fucking started on this people aren't going to get to this it's five <laughs> minutes in and we're talking about the fun yeah. <laughs> people are going to be like Ugh. but it was so much crack and like it was so funny because like our little avatars and ourselves are like not the same you know like i kept saying i kept saying to people that everybody was taller in real life <laughs> <laughs> 
because their their Twitter <laughs> avatar is at the same height level as me, but like in real life, everybody's like a foot taller. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it was just the the oh yeah, there was always that that moment of like, is that the person that I'm always messaging on Twitter or LinkedIn? And you go over, or someone comes over to you, and you're like taking like a minute to figure out who they are. But it was lovely. Like it was it was just so nice to put like people to faces and personalities and online stuff and and then so i like there's all we were talking about all those 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 corporate releases but what blew my mind was how creative people are with webflow and and i have to say like hats off to webflow for not limiting people's creativity and when i'm talking about creativity i don't just think about animations or drawings i'm thinking about like how people are implementing the tool into their businesses and even the businesses of their clients. So we had talks on animations. We had talks on like the SEO talk was mind blowing by search historian. It's just like you, this is yeah. so, so imaginative and so creative to, to see the possibilities with inside this, this product that we're working with. And I was just like, I've never even thought about that, you know, never thought about that that type of structure and how to structure a site like that it was just so cool and then there was um yeah there was one guy and i forget his name and just talking about webflow changing his life and being a part of uh, being a freelancer and then being a part of like different agencies and he was just so infectious his like his positivity and then rob hope i was saying to you he's like the personification of of a landing page. He's so clear and concise. His language is yeah. so well delivered and like, or is so well chosen and his delivery is just on point. So like his, his talk was like, you know, I think if I saw his talk first and then if he asked the question, be honest, did, did you know what a landing page was before my talk? I would have put up my hand and said no, but because he asked at the start, who here doesn't know what a landing page is? I was like, I know what a landing page is, but I've like I've <laughs> a top level understanding of a landing page, whereas he knows what a landing page is. Blew my mind as well. Yeah. And then there was even was it Alicia Coden Wander talking about um how they've built like CMS structures in Webflow and given it to their clients to make their clients' business move. Uh, more seamlessly i was just like it's a business like it, it they're thinking about it like notion or something it was just nuts i was absolutely blown away um because like i go i'm so like deep in my little you know html css how do i use javascript how do i turn this into a product kind of thing that sometimes i can't i don't i don't see other people's or I, i'm not exposed to other people's creativity and then when I see it, like just up front, I'm I'm literally my jaw is hitting the ground. Well, so cool. Well, that's the thing as well. Like when when you say creativity, it's often the whiz bangs of the world. You know the the animations, the as you said, like the the um, the drawings. Let's call it the images, the visuals, the moving stuff. And then to actually redefine that in the Webflow conf, let's, it is it wasn't a conference really. It was just a massive meetup of people who love hanging out with each other i thought you were going to say a massive the, the stuff. <laughs> it was one of those as well but <laughs> yeah we uh yeah we did we did well happy, happy hour let's let's happy hour was a what was there. it your point before you go on <laughs> no 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 happy hour happy hour is at three o'clock like i've never been to a happy hour that early on i don't know if if the organizers, you know, coming from the West Coast of America had got their time zones wrong or something, but happy hours normally like six onwards. That's kind of the standard, you know, after work. This happy hours at three o'clock. And that just, that just set the ball rolling. Um, but yeah, on the creative side, it's like, it, like being creative is great, but being creative to deliver value was what came through a lot of those talks. Like, you know, landing pages with Rob, it's like, yeah, you can, you can be creative but it has an end result because you're, you end up, you know, what was it like? Um, you tell them, you get someone else to tell them and you show them that kind of vibe. And then search historian, 
it was about you know rankings and traffic and then uh, alessia was was about actually how do you make your clients world that much easier so they can move forward more quickly and those like they were being creative in their own domain but it also had like the stuff that i went back to the client one of my main clients is like guys we need to do this on all your landing pages um yeah, yeah. this is some seo advice that i picked up and i'm going to set up um the cms in a way that you can publish a new page and drag in components like that boom and it's like talk about value like we didn't pay anything to go there but talk about value for money i just got more out of that than i did any videos that i watch online um because i think i don't know i'm just i'm just sitting there with people we're all on the same wavelength we're there because we want to be there and we're watching stuff that our peers are presenting in a way that's not sort of, oh, they're in their ivory towers and telling us this is the way it's said. They were just sharing their knowledge in a, in just, you know, and then two minutes later, you're kind of, you're having a beer and hanging out and just chatting and not really chatting shop. You're just more like having fun. And it, it was pretty, pretty crazy. You know, there were guys there, like, it, obviously everyone's sharing pictures of, yeah, a picture with Vlad and a picture with, you know, Aaron and, um but some of those were, were pinch me moments like like Aaron I I followed since the Airtable days I think I bought his course back in the day and just to and then I watched his videos cuz I find them really interesting and just to say hello to him and just he just stood there just chatting chatting shit about stuff in on a human level and it just it was so nice it was just yeah. I feel like I'm 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 now much closer to the San Fran Webflow team than than ever than I've ever been. They're not a, a Webflow product team anymore. They're kind of part of my team almost. You know, sounds a bit yeah. cheesy, but it's yeah, no, it's it makes sense. Cool like, there is um, especially with technology, like you've been being over in Europe, you can feel a bit distant from things, like even simple things, like you're paying for this product in dollars. You know, it's like it's a for me, that like even simple things like that, it's a disconnect between like what you're actually doing on a day to day life. Like, um, so having having the conference in 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 Europe was was brilliant. Like, it just, I think there was a bit of a giddiness about everybody, the excitement that a company would come over and do that and um uh, include us. I suppose was was really nice. Um, yeah. It was it was really cool and yeah, and it it is I get what you're saying because when we see everybody's avatar, they're like we can put them up on a pedestal like even though at the end of the day most people are just workers like us, they've got their yeah, yeah. stuff they're they've got shit they need to figure out problems to solve, you know, and they're figuring their way out around life and but when you're seeing like a version of them like online it's it's very uh i even know like the stuff that i put up online it's like it's incredibly polished it's like one very specific thing like it's not it's not my personality you know it's my my um my business hat or something you know it's my marketing hat so yeah yeah um, yeah to meet people and get past that um like especially for me like even for me to even show that i'm not just this marketing avatar that i put up online I, I think is is pretty awesome. Yeah, no, I like if if there was one in February, I'd I'd be over in a flash. It's um, I think also I think and it's weird. Maybe it's it's no thing against the the American um, meetups, but I feel like now there's there's a, an accessible home to go to. I think the you know I was talking to Emily after, and she's like, yeah, London surprised us. This is awesome. This is like the energy levels are through the roof here. You know. And it felt like they were going, okay, well, London or a city in Europe is going to be a permanent fixture, Dublin. which meant like <laughs> Dublin. <laughs> yeah. Although to be honest, I quite enjoyed traveling. I quite enjoyed traveling. So, so I, I would, I would actually say like Berlin or. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, somewhere in, like in Italy somewhere. would be pretty, you know, you make, you, you get in the holiday mode almost. It's like, we're all here on equal footing, yeah. you know. That kind of vibe. I feel like that that was um but yeah, I just I just feel like it it put say put Europe on the map. That's so cliched and but I think it just it just gave us that little like I I feel like I can turn 
instead of turning stateside now, I can definitely turn back to continental Europe from Ireland. You know, we're kind of, we, we do a lot of stuff with the States because that's, you know, we've got a lot of relationship with the States. Um, but the fact that we can turn the other way now and feel like there's a, a massive amount of friends and contacts and expertise and it's just like, it's pretty awesome. It's yeah, um, like that, that, just come away with a, a feel good factor. That's one thing there about like the different expertise. That's what, um, yeah. Like I've always been very pro, um, getting people who are better than me involved in projects. You know, I, I don't want to be, a, I don't want to do everything in a project. I want to do what I do incredibly well. And I want to work with more, with other people who do their thing incredibly well. And then from that, there's like an osmosis of ideas and, and like thing. I, I just think when there's more heads involved in a job, the product ends up being bigger and better, not necessarily bigger, just better. And it also allows you problem solve without, you know, not just demons in your own head, trying to figure something out. It's problem solving together. <laughs> so like, so yeah, knowing, just knowing of people in 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 and around where you are is is pretty cool because there's there's a lot of people over there that do that were at the conference and they don't have the same they don't have a big digital presence but they're bloody good at what they do and like you yeah. get talking to them and you're just like what really really you can do that <laughs> tell me more <laughs> yeah yeah there are there's so many smart people it's uh yeah and smart people who just who who don't think they're smart they're just doing doing what they do and to be able to talk to random people there just hey how are you doing never met you before online and then they just tell you how they do stuff or what they do or where they get their leads from client leads and all it like just mm. and going i want to buy you a beer but all the beer is free so i can't buy you a beer but you know maybe, maybe i'll buy you a beer next time kind of vibe you know it's just you've already just, a week just for next year's yeah. london conference because of <laughs> because of that because happy hours at three o'clock you know yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah anyway we um we're approaching the hour mark and we've rambled a lot so um what are we going to do next time i think what we'll do is we'll pick a topic and we'll try and a relevant topic you know it might be timely it might not be um and just think, do a little um, deep dive on that and just yeah, yeah. like if somebody actually has like ended up after 58 minutes and two seconds of of us shy talking got to the end <laughs> send send matt a dm if there's anything you want us to talk about um but i think we should probably talk about the dom dom da dom 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 or maybe go a bit deeper into releases like the actual uh, the releases of um, Webflow have released in the last week or so. Um, one of those two things. Cause, yeah, uh, and the, obviously we've got the new new UI is is hovering oh yeah. around in the background. I know. Web, yeah, we've got that. To, oh my god! Like to jump into. In a way, I love it, but it pisses me off that they moved the preview <laughs> from here to here. Like, fuck's sake! Excuse my French. It's not. It's a. Well, it's a play button, button now, isn't it? It's a play button. I don't <laughs> mind the play button. I just don't like where it is. It's like I keep going like mouse here. <laughs> and it's like, oh, I have to go over here. So, yeah, I think about that. <laughs> so, yeah. You have to re retrain about. your muscles, your muscle memory. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, let's talk about the new. Yeah, okay. And, and the dom. The dom. The dom, which is <laughs> causing the stir. Yeah around around the uh twitter sphere um okay cool well um that was a good one that was right that was the second recording we've done this already before but we've but someone in the team will go oh, unmentioned we did this before it's not the second recording <laughs> it's a second attempt <laughs> second attempt yeah yeah the first recording was um it's in the cloud a fake recording let's call it it's in the cloud somewhere but we just don't know where <laughs> So hopefully, hopefully this one makes the light of day and other people can hear it. But, um, yeah, you'd imagine. If, um, and as as go on, I was about to say that you'd. Uh, yeah, we might need someone who's good at tech to help us. <laughs> <laughs>
But yeah, um, right, one hour and fifteen seconds. We're we're done. That that was that was a good one. All right. So um, until until next time. Yeah, we'll talk to. Uh, yeah, talk to you next time. Good luck. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye bye. Bye.